It is a barren hill with a few bricks here and there overlooking the Missouri River. It seems impossible to believe it is gone. It was the Great Falls ACM smelter. It was just so big and important, and one would have thought the state of Montana would have failed before the Anaconda Company, as they seem to be one and the same. It was more than a place where thousands worked. It is where they bowled, golfed, picnicked, went to work, and went on strike. It was one of the most important industrial plants in World War II, and the place the world got its copper wire in peacetime. It was the iconic symbol of Great Falls. And this is its story. It starts with the first bricks of the stack, the excitement over the dream, the waiting with bated breath for the first puff of smoke, and the headlines announcing that the tallest stack in the world was our own. 115-year-old photographs and papers are just part of the story. The History Museum of Great Falls and the National Film Preservation Foundation have carefully restored a treasure of the fragile film before it disintegrated. This rare film brings to life 80 and 90 year old images of what it was like inside the smelter. It also shows a smelter that was to be the showcase of modern industry and modern life, complete with waterfalls, fountains, gardens, and recreation. The folks at Anaconda Copper took uh, extra efforts to uh, beautify the plant, and to uh, make it open to the public to appreciate the efforts. It was even where Great Falls went for holiday outings. Where else in the world did one go to an industrial plant to see a fairyland of lights, the blazing beauty of perfect Christmas trees, and the highlight, a glimpse of a small chapel, a peaceful respite in the city all next to where the night shift was refining zinc and copper. Producers selected these pictures from over a thousand images that tell the story of people who came from the old country to live the American dream. And farm boys who found work in the big city of Great Falls. I was working for a farm, farmer for a dollar a day boarding room, and uh, my brother-in-law came up with a work order because uh, Hitler had uh, got, uh, interfered again in Czechoslovakia somehow, and the New York office gave our office here orders to double production. So I didn't even have to look for the job when they gave it to me that time. <laughs> First person interviews give us some of the last chances to know a bygone era of working for the mighty ACM, especially during its busiest days. In the mold, you put form four balls like this attached. Then you had to clip them balls off and put them in a wooden box. And that was shipped. And that's when the war effort started. And those were used to coat the wings of airplanes. So they played an important part in the war effort. The producer spent a year going through artifacts that show a smelter that made Great Falls one of the most important places in the free world during World War II. Bullets, planes, tanks, men and women, and a combined management and labor board gave the smelter the top War Department Efficiency Award. That very flag is unfurled again in Under the Big Stack, the Great Falls Smelter Remembered.
This award was taken very seriously by the folks at Anaconda. Uh, they had a, a company publication uh, that was for wartime effort called the Copper Commando. It had a number of articles each time that the award was received, which was a very proud event. There was a very large banner that they were able to fly over the plant because of this, which had uh, an E on it for excellence and efficiency. When they received it again, they were uh, put, uh, able to put white stars on it to indicate that they were multiple recipients. Generations spent their lives working at the smelter, starting when they were kids as bin setters in the company lanes, and retiring as zinc and copper workers doing some of the hardest work around. Thousands of papers and company publications give a look at those workers and the company that paid 12% of all Montana taxes and owned 5% of all the state's real estate. It is a story of metal, management and labor, and how they all met at work and on picket lines. People complained and there's a record of strikes. It sounds terrible. There were strikes in the 20s and 30s, and in 57, 64, 67, 71, 74, 77, and June 30th, 1980, that was the last strike, and that's the day I took the last inventory. It was a different time when there were big unions and one of the biggest companies in the world, a company that fought hard, but also publicized the winner of each month's Big Fish Award wrote articles about what families ate in Black Eagle, encouraged all to go to church, and sometimes suggested what ballot issues might be good to vote for in the next election. There simply was no other company like ACM. And there simply was no other industrial plant like the Great Falls Smelter, and there never will be again. Under the Big Stack, the Great Falls Smelter Remembered, debuting fall 2013, a history museum film.